Have you ever wanted to own your very own BB unit? Now you can! It's Star Wars Galaxy's Edge! Hey everybody, welcome to the Dano channel. I am Dano, that's S4DB4BY. We've got some Porgs, we've got some Pasquapid. Who knows where Sandy's at? But today, we're gonna be taking a look at this guy, my orange BB unit. So Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is open now. And part of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is a really cool... It is cool, right? It's one of the best shops. I, well, this is where he came from, so obviously you're a little biased. Whatever. Uh, but there's the Droid Depot. Now, the Droid Depot is this, this cool, like, build your own... It's like Build-A-Bear, but kind of on steroids. Um, not only in quality, but also price. Uh, so it's $99.99 to build your own droid. You can build an R unit. If you want to know more about that, check out the video I did yesterday. There will be a card somewhere up there, a little eye that you can click on to go to that video. But today we're focusing solely on the BB units. We're going to be looking at really the only accessory they sell for it and all the different voice chips, as well as talk a little bit more about the interactivity that they are supposed to have and what that is in reality. So, first things first, when you get to the Droid Depot, you should know you're probably gonna have to wait in line. Like I mentioned before in my other video, my experience may not be the exact same as your experience. June 24th at Disneyland is when Galaxy's Edge opens to the public and you don't need reservations. So we don't know how many people they're gonna be letting in, how crazy it's gonna be. I imagine during the week. Yeah, well, hopefully, yeah, no, hopefully on like a weekday, a Monday or so, it'll be a little less crazy than on a weekend. And then you also have to figure out blackout days for the different annual passes. If, it's, if locals are blacked out, it's going to be a little bit nicer to go if you're not a local. Uh, if you are a local, depends on what pass you have, that kind of thing. So, you're going to go. I waited about 50 minutes. It was, little, it was probably about an hour the first time I did it. And the second time I waited, probably a little bit longer. When I made this guy, it was probably a little bit over like an hour and a half. Eh, yeah, around 20, something around there. Either way, expect about an hour wait if it's busy. I've seen videos of people who just walked right up and got in line and waited like maybe 15 minutes. So it's going to be a different experience. Well, yeah, no, totally. And it all depends on like what time you get there, what, you know, and how just crazy things are. But you'll notice my hands are full and my droids are beeping and booping. I mentioned in my last video that they don't interact. You may have also noticed that they didn't exactly go off at the same time. I, for the last half hour before recording this, I wanted to experiment more about how they interact because cast members in line, when I was making mine, they told me, they said, if you buy your droid, it's going to interact and it's going to do things at home. And I'm like, well, is it? Because I took them home and they don't really talk to each other. But we'll go into that in just a minute as to how they interact. Um, so you're going to pay your $99.99. .99. You're going to tell them which kind of droid you want. So the BB is an R unit. Today we're going with the BB. And they've got this cool conveyor belt coming out of the wall. You can see all the kind of all the cool stuff, like all the little pieces floating by. There's heads. There's bodies. All right, guys, we are building a BB series droid. We need a head. We need an inside thingamy thing. We need two outer pieces. Option one, so these are option one, option two, option three, different styles we can make. Okay, all right. I am. I need to grab a core for sure, so let's grab a core. And that's where all the pieces are coming from. Let's grab... I think I want to go orange. I want... Yeah, I like that style. I like that style. Oh, what is that thing on the inside? I don't know what that does. It's very interesting. I'm being told there's no heads left for BB-8s. That's that is interesting. Oh, I want this one with the antenna. Yeah, that's the one I want. The one with the antenna. Um, what is that different from the one I just had? One has oh the antennas in the bottom. This one the antenna's already attached. Okay. I still don't know what these little orange booper pieces are. And if I need it, I'm gonna assume I need it for something. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I need a case. I need an outer shell. I think I want one of these orange ones. Oops. Oh, there's, oh, are they already stuck together? 
They are. They're all stuck together. So I've got my two outers. I just don't know what that thing is. And that might be this little orange piece that we're talking about. That is it. That is this. I think it goes, oh, it does. Look, it goes right on. It's like, and that's what the head attaches to. It's actually really very magnetic. It's like, that's cool. So I've got my head, I've got the magnetic piece, two outer shells, and a center, and I think we're done. Now we get to go take it over to the station and build it. No what? No legs, it's round, yeah. And for the BB unit specifically, they give you a basket. Well, for both of them, they give you a basket. But in the basket, it details the pieces that you need to grab. The BB unit is actually extremely simple. It's, uh... <laughs> you hear that? It's just going... I'm not even doing nothing. I'm going I'm to disassemble the whole thing because it's that easy. We're, we're looking at it. We're looking at the pieces for a BB unit right now. This is what you're going you're gonna to find in the conveyor belt. You're going to find bundled sections of the circle so they're taped together so you get two and they're already like plastic wrapped together kind of you pick one core uh, as far as I remember all the cores were just black so you don't get much variety on this and then the head is really where you get the most variety again there are multiple colors I've seen blues I've seen greens I've seen orange I've seen white maybe not green I think I saw green but I, I don't remember uh, definitely orange black white red blue purple I've seen all of those. Well, yeah, and different heads, too. So there's heads like this, which are going to be a little bit different than your standard BB-8 style. Uh, and again, these come in all colors, but then there's a standard BB-8 style head, and you can get those in various colors as well. Uh, and then there's another piece that you need, this under piece, this little thing. You can get them in different colors. This one that I've got, you'll notice there are two holes there. Uh, there are screws. When you pull the little drill down from the station where you start building, you, this is the part you actually assemble and screw together. But you can get a different colored bottom if you want. Maybe I could have. I could have got a black one or something. I don't know. I went with orange because it matched orange. But you load your pieces in your basket and you head over to the workstation. And if you're lucky, an attendant will walk you through it. I actually had trouble building my BB unit. And, you know, I'm just... I'm totally fine looking like a dingus on camera. I do this every day of my life. I'm a 36-year-old man who who talks to lizard monkeys and droids. So, you know, it, I'm, I'm totally fine looking like a, like a complete dingus, all right? Well, well that's, that's just rude to say. You know what, that's just so rude to say. All right, so we have cell information on the bottom of the box. Um, so we have new power cells on So, you're gonna build them yourself. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, you press the yellow button to alert us and have some questions. All right. I'm just getting them ready for you. Okay. Do you have a new purse right here? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Still thinking about it? Yeah, still thinking about it. It's hard. It is, it is. It's difficult when you have so many choices. Is there a specific type that this is called normally? Like, you know, there's R2s that look a certain way, R5s. Um, you know if this one has a specific type? No. no. Maybe it's just unique. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll you figure call out it something. something. Yeah, we'll figure out something good for him. All right, go ahead. Okay, and just kind of follow the instructions. Oh, you know what? I didn't get these. Or are they here? Yes. Oh, right they're right here. here. Okay, cool. So, step one says we take this thing. Look how wobbly everything is on the table. It's also wobbly. Okay, so we take this thing. We're gonna take some of these. I'm gonna do black. I feel like black is the way to go. Oh my. And they just go in on the inside. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> They're a little hard to do and get in there one-handed, but it's okay. I think we got it. All right, so there's one set. Boom. And then we get another one. Are my only options here? Oh no, there's gray. I wanna do gray. If there's gray, it's way cooler. There's another gray here. There's one more. There's one more gray in here. I actually like gray better rather than just black over and over. Gray is so much cooler. We've got one piece on there. We've got piece number two in there, just fine. Step two is going to be to put these on. Take it, one just goes in there like that. And it's gonna wobble and do its thing. Another one goes right on top. Is that right? I'm gonna do it this way. I like that better. 
Uh, next up, number three is to make sure the antenna is on. He does have his antenna on. Looks like they stashed it in the bottom usually, but he's set with his antenna. Number four is to take this piece and put the head on top. Oh, do I have it wrong? Oh, this one? Oh, it's supposed to line yeah, up. Yeah, because the see, they're not lining up. Oh, so it could look even cooler. All right. Let's, uh... you can, I mean, if you want it like that, go ahead. Yeah, no, let's see how that looks. That might look way different. Oh, yeah, that works. Yeah, that works a little bit better. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that was really nice. So, yeah, we've got the bottom. We're going to put our... Right there. That clamps on just fine. And this is the magnetic part. Whoa. That really does, it's like got a really good force to like pull on it. But again, let me make sure this is on all the way. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. Eh, maybe not. Kind of tough to really get it on there. Yeah, it definitely seems to come out. Let me try see if that makes a difference. No, it's, it definitely seems like it's kind of light. You know, Maybe like ask her? Yeah, I'll ask her. Oh, I have to screw it down, that's why. Uh, now I'm like, why is that not working? Okay, so you do have to screw that down using the tool. That makes more sense. Okay, so we got that right. Sure we've got... Really make sure I've got that down. It does seem a little off still, even with that. I'll just try it and see. Doesn't seem to be, uh, yeah, it doesn't Testing sound like it's... Oh, no. Yeah, it doesn't seem to really be catching. Hmm. That one felt better. There we go. Now it's definitely good. Got it. Now we can see how it makes it wobble just by doing that. Oh, there we go. Did it not catch the right? There's definitely a sweet spot. Right there. It seems like... It seems a little off. Yeah. I don't know. Let's, maybe I did it wrong. Or maybe I've got him upside down. Well, he should be. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a weird stance he's got going. He yeah. doesn't seem to go right on top. This is definitely. So maybe this isn't the way to go. I don't know. This is. This is very interesting. So you turn it. Make sure I can find that sweet spot. <laughs> and again, I can always take this apart. So I put it on and check this out. It sits weird. It didn't sit very uh see now it sits good. Yeah. We're gonna put that back on, line up our tabs, and he kinda wobbled like his head was sideways. It's very strange. So we put him on and he does that. So yeah, I tried finding it. Yeah, but I've seen the other ones with a similar style and it's still up front. Oh, did we get it? Yep. Oh, good, good. Okay, so you just kind of have to find it sometimes. Yeah, so it's two magnets on top, the magnets on bottom, you have to find both. So they both, yeah, okay. Yeah, so we only have one right now, so I'm going to... That explains it. Perfect. So I guess we're ready to activate. Go ahead and... 
Do you want him? Okay, we're gonna put him in there. No. Oh, oh, I gotta take him apart and turn him on. I didn't see that part on here. Okay. We'll take a look in here. So on the switch right here, and oh, okay. then you just turn that switch up. Okay, perfect. I wonder if we'll have to find that sweet spot again. Ooh, there we go, line up the red arrows, looking good. Right, got it, the sweet spot right away, that looks awesome. You are way better at this than I am. Go. Just a little slow, okay. Hey! This droid matches me then, that's alright. <laughs> and activate. Alright, we ready? Let's do it. Right. He's coming to life. He's coming to life. There they go. They're all going. So, don't press anything yet. Okay. Okay. If it does go fast, I'm going to move it up here. Be careful. Okay? So don't let him go off. Oh, oh gotcha. He does go fast. Okay. All right. Okay, that's, okay, that's right. backwards. Oh, I see. This is the way his face is going. Oh, okay. Got it. He does this very wobbly. He's very wobbly. And he should... Oh, there, there he goes. He's talking. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, I have a chip. Where do the chips go on these? It's inside. inside, huh? Yeah, I bought a chip yesterday okay. for this. Here, and it matches, actually. The chip matches. So we got to break them open again. And the chip. Ah, okay. So should I put that on before I do the, the gray part? Okay. Probably a little easier for my big old fat fingers. Snap that down. Very good. Awesome. <laughs> We go, line up our tabs, get that nice sweet spot going. All right, yeah, and there he goes. Oh, cool. And again, so we can interact with the land. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> he is very, very jittery. Oh, he's a good jittery. That's cool. No, I get it. That's great. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, okay, and as you guys just saw in my video, you got your your bottom shell. You put your core inside. There are these little gray things, these little gray pieces. They, honestly, they just kind of get in the way. They get in the way of the power button and they get in the way of putting in your personality chip. Uh, and again, as you saw, if you have a personality chip and want to do that, you may want to do that first. You may want to make sure you've purchased the accessories. And again, the accessories are going to be the six personality chips, two first order, two smuggler chips or two uh, resistance chips and we'll listen to all those in just a minute the other accessory you can buy and I yeah no this is the best accessory if you can find one is the backpack it's a droid backpack and it's got this cool little flap it's $40 $39.99 the, the personality chips are $12.99 but it's got a cool little magnet in here and see it says like industrial automaton astromech droids this folds down and it's got a magnet to keep it closed and your little droid sits inside and I actually was able to take the insert out. You stay there. I was able to take the insert out. This is it. It is three pieces of foam, about inch and a half, maybe two inches thick. And the top layer is kind of rounded so it holds the BB unit. In fact, we can kind of show you how it cradles that in there. But it also has these, uh, it's like a rectangle thing where it can fit the R unit feet. So this holds either droid, and this is actually inside the backpack. I thought it didn't come out. I thought it was not removable, but it came out just fine. So I'll, I like that backpack even more because what this means is now I get like a dual function bag. This cool bag 
And I bought patches, I should probably do full disclosure here. This Jawa patch and the Droid Depot patch are not part of the bag. I added those separately, those are $9.99 each. 20 extra bucks, so this is a $60 bag now, uh, which is kind of pricey. But I really like the patches and I wanted to make it mine. And I thought the Jawa recycle thing was just too cool to pass up. So, plus I know I'm going back. I know that I'm gonna- Whoa. Oh. He really wants me to tell you guys about the interactivity and what I found out. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. So, I'm gonna reassemble him. I'm gonna put this bag off to the side. You guys know about the bag. And again, if you don't wanna buy the bag, you can get this box. They give you this box for free. This does not cost anything. This is included. Your droid will sit inside. There's a little window for him to peek his head out of. And it's got a cool like Droid Depot logo. It says custom astromech units. Got some cool stuff. Droid beaconing. This droid will interact along its journey throughout Black Spire Outposts. It's got a cool little barcode thing with some arabesh on the side. On the bottom are instructions on how to access the panels to replace the batteries. Uh, there is a very simple panel on the back. It has a screw. A little screwdriver panel. You can just open the back of the remote. That's right. Yeah, very simple. And that takes two triple A's. And then on the actual droid itself, there is a panel on the bottom. You would unscrew up here. And that's where you would put your, what is it? Six, two triple A's for the remote and six double A's for the droid itself. That goes for both the R2 and the BB unit. Now, as we saw in the clip earlier, you do want to line up your two little red arrows. Boom, 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 lined up. And then we're gonna put our little head and kind of find it, twist it till it's right. There we go, he's sitting up right, he looks good. Oh, you know what we didn't do though? No, so I just want, okay, he's built, he's built. We can see how built he is, he looks good. But now it's time that we test out these, these voice functions. For the sake of saking, I'm gonna just turn off S4D, sorry to power you down, buddy, but I don't want any interruptions. So we're gonna get listening to this interactive personality chips. Um, real quick, I did want to show you this paper that I was given. So I asked at Droid Depot, because the cast members will tell you, the droids interact with each other, they interact with each other. In the land, yeah, they interact with each other because there's that droid beaconing. Um, if you don't want the magic ruined, maybe you know, skim past this a little bit. And this may not be 100% accurate, but this is my understanding of the technology. As you wander through Black Spire Outpost, you're walking around Batu. Uh, say you're in the First Order area. Apparently the personality chips will work in that if you have a resistance chip in your droid, the and you're in the First Order area, you may get like nervous sounding or like worried sounding beeps. Or if you're a resistance chip and you're in the resistance area, you'll get happy beeps. And likewise, you know, the opposite will happen with First Order. First Order will be nervous by resistance, or not happy by resistance, and then when you go to, res to the First Order side, First Order will be happy. And I'm not sure what the smugglers do. They probably do some, like, some kind of mix with both. But they interact with the land. There are these Bluetooth beacons everywhere. So what happens is, as you wander towards an area, if, say, let's say you and three friends each have droids on your back, and you wander through this area, and you get to a first order area somewhere where there's a beacon. There's beacons throughout the land. Are you going upstairs by Doc Ondars? I know there's a beacon up there because I've seen that. And all your droids will start going off. But because there's different frequencies for these different remotes, my droid may get it one second. Your droid may get it in two seconds. And it seems like they interact. Because yours is booping and beeping. Mine seems like it's booping and beeping back because it takes place a few seconds later. And then they're interacting. They like the magic is there. It seems like they're interacting. It's very similar to the technology for the uh, change your ears, the colored ears that Disney has. They have these glow with the show ears they debuted a while back that work with all around the park. Actually, there was Paint the Night that it worked with, and there's the World of Color show that while the show's going on, if you have the light up ears, it sends a signal. They have beacons that send the signal, and they'll change the color of your ears to match the show. And if there's hundreds of people wearing them, everyone's ears change. You know, it's it's a cool experience. It's, it's a neat thing. But it's a similar tech to these where they're beaming that info over. I do like how that boops down. Hmm, I wonder why. But it's a similar technology where they beam that Bluetooth signal out. Your droid receives it and starts whirling around and beeping and booping. Uh, and because, I should point this out, if you're going to buy the backpack, this is very important, actually. If you're going to wear this around, which is the funnest thing to do, there is a little hole, you see this little hole right here? On the bottom of the backpack? 
or I'm sorry, on the back of the head. And there's a little chain inside the backpack, which has a pocket for accessories. And this little chain, you would actually chain to that hole on the BB unit's head. That way, when you have it in there, and he starts booping and beeping, the head doesn't fly off and you lose it. It's actually chained to the bag, and that's a really cool accessory, like a really cool point to this bag that I think makes it worth it. Uh, one thing I didn't point out before is there's also a slot on the side for the remote. So if you can find this bag for 40 bucks, I think it's worth it. I think it completely adds to the experience, whether it's an R unit or a BB unit. Again, I'm all over the place with this stuff. So I think I've kind of explained enough how the, the interacting with the land works. But to that same technology, when you're at home, you don't have that. You don't. It just doesn't. There's no beacons in your house sending out that signal. So how would your droids know? So in this, I asked the cast members, I said, hey, mine don't really do anything when they're at home. What's up? What's going on? They don't really interact with each other. And as you've seen earlier in this video, they were both interrupting me without me touching the remotes long after their five minute little turnoff period. So they gave me the sheet and they said, look, we don't see anywhere on the sheet that it says that they actually interact with each other outside of Batu. And I just want to show you guys for proof, like what, what I'm looking at here. There we go. On the top left it says droid beaconing. These droids will interact along their journey through Black Spire Outpost. That's the extent of what it says. As far as the BB unit, it just talks about how to pair it, how to make sure you get your antenna out from the bottom of the unit and put it on top. Uh, it looks like certain ones have multiple antennas. The one I have only has one antenna. Peel off tape, twist body to unlocks. They are taped. You gotta line up your arrows. Uh, slide your switch on, boom, boom, boom. Pair with the controller, which they walk you through when they do the whole thing. And then the next part's gonna be similar. It's, yeah, just how to, how to align it. Oh, this is just telling you how to peel off tape and twist the body to unlock. Boom, this is how to lock it back in place. How to put the head on. If it's a droopy head off to the side, it's not on right. It should be upright on the body. And again, controller, all the different buttons, and we've got them here. We've got, and this is interesting, rotate head right and left, and left and right do the same thing on the uh, on the BB unit. They happen to just make it rotate like that, and the head moves. So those two sets of buttons all do the same thing, no matter which one you're hitting. Rotate head or just move left and right because it's a ball, that's just how it works. Uh, well, then we have our talk button, this makes it talk. And this would be, on the R unit, this is the one that makes the accessories work, this top red button. On here, it just says no function with BB series, but that's not correct, it actually makes it talk alternate noises, makes it do alternate beeps. Uh, and then there's forwards and backwards, which can up and down, forwards and backwards. And then it does say here, sleep mode, five minutes. BB series droid will go to sleep if not activated for five minutes. So, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, these were beeping and booping long after five minutes. And before I started recording this, I sat here for 30 minutes with a timer on just to keep track of how often they beeped and booped and if they went to sleep at that five minute mark. Now, I still stand by the thought that they don't directly interact with each other because I did an experiment where I hit them both at the same time and set them down. And about one minute and 20 seconds in, my BB unit goes off. And then I'm like, okay, maybe maybe the uh, the R2 will start going, or the R unit will start going off in response. Another minute and 20 seconds goes by. I'm sorry, a minute, yeah, from there, from the minute 20, then it takes a minute and like two seconds, R unit goes off. I'm like, okay, weird. So then another minute and two seconds, BB unit goes off. I mean, so it's not like one talks and the other talks, and the other one talks and the other one talks. They just got themselves on a weird cycle where each one was on a two minute cycle, but they were off by a minute. So it's like, it takes two minutes for this one to hit, but it also took this one two minutes to hit. So you're doing this stagger. So every minute and two seconds, another one would interact. It, I say interact because it's not really them interacting with each other. They just happen to get on a cycle where every night I timed it, it was like a minute and two seconds. And I would go look and be, oh, it's coming up, it's coming up. And you could do it like clockwork. A minute and two seconds, a minute and two seconds. I tried it with opposing uh, sound chips, uh, one was first order, one was resistance, same thing, nothing changed. Minute and two seconds. I had someone on Facebook today earlier tell me that they were timing it and it was a minute and 45 seconds. I'm still gonna have to run more experiments, but this means there is some level of interactivity when you have them home. I, I don't wanna say they're fully interactive when they come home because having to wait a minute 
in between each one's booping and beeping. That's not interactive. Interactive would be, hi, boo, 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 boo. And then this one, boo, 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 right back in response, in like conversation timing. That's not what happens. It wasn't. I have a whole minute. And, and we can, once we listen to the sounds, as I go over more stuff, I might set that up for you just so you know. But for now, I think the, the real point is we need to listen to the sounds of this thing. You guys ready? Okay, so for $12.99, we have our chips. There's a red and a black. These are the first order. You can see they come in a, ba a box with a first order sticker on it. And I just like the back of the box. It's cool. It says, to activate sounds, chip must be connected to any assembled astromech droid and activated by controller. So that's all it says. You know, that's it. That's all it says. Nothing else crazy on there. $12.99. There's two different SKUs. One ends in 5.3, one ends in 5.4. These chips are the same chips that will work with this unit. And they'll also work inside of a BB. Doesn't matter. You don't need specific chips. This one will work in both. But there will be different first order sounds depending on which color you get. Same with the smuggler. And again, there's the smuggler sticker down there. Two different SKUs, one ending in 5.6, one ending in 5.8. Purple and gray. Last, we've got the resistance. Two different boxes. There's blue, there's orange. One ending in 5.5, one ending in 5.7. Those are the chips. They're all going to make different sounds inside the droid. Okay, first let's start off with the red first order. I'm going to turn this thing on. Okay. Interesting, interesting. I don't, I don't know that I love the sound. It's kind of a weird sound. I'm going to clear my uh, my table here real quick now that I can finally get rid of these boxes that I've reviewed them all for all the videos. Go away! <laughs> okay. These actually sound very familiar to what we heard in the R2. And actually, I can probably plop this thing on here, just so you can at least see the lights light up. Now, did anything change when I removed the head? That was kind of interesting. No, it's the same. Okay, so we've kind of come full circle on the red one. I'm going to remove you, red. I'm going to put in the black one. Whoa. Whoa, that's a crazy sound. You've got mail. That, sound, that sounds like the old 90s, late 90s internet startup sound. Whoa. That black chip is crazy sounding. It really does sound like a fax machine or something. Oh my goodness. I don't know if it's just because I don't have the uh, the plastic shell on, but it sounds so much louder than the R2 was, or the R unit. Oh my goodness. Okay, this black one sounds nuts. I, I think we've heard enough of that one. Let's move on to the gray smuggler. I could have just listened to that forever. Uh, let's listen to the gray smuggler. Actually, real quick, I want to just test the uh, R unit real fast and just see what happens. Uh, if it's a similar sound with the black one, I think that's a worthwhile test while we're here. Oh, you stop. Oh my goodness, why are you mad? It is the same sounds.
Oh, okay. <laughs> enough, enough out of you, sir. So, just so you know, they make the same sounds, no matter which one. The difference being that this one, the BB unit, kind of processes them a little bit different, so it has a slightly different version of the sound, but it's the same beeps. You know what I'm saying? It's the same sequence of beeps. It's just they come out sounding a little differently on this one than they do the R unit, maybe, by the way the speaker's built. I don't know, but... It, that is interesting to know. They are the same beeps. Yep. That is the same. Back full circle, okay. Ooh, I guess if I remove it mid chirp, it just stops. Also, good to know. So, let's put that one in. Let's hit the button. This is the purple smuggler. Okay, I like this one. This is the one I refer to as the Charlie Brown parents in my other video. like this one i'm gonna probably leave this one in the droid regularly i think that's like the right sound yeah that's the right sound for this for me like for this orange droid this is the right sound and in fact i'll, I'll talk about the name in just a little bit i think i came up with a name and i like it i like it a lot Reminds me of Metroid. This one's so slow. He's a very sleepy droid. This would go good with a blue, like a blue BB unit. Just a blue, I'm kind of slow. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, I spend way too much time with these toys. If I can give them personality based on their beeps. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, sleepy droid. Now, I'm curious if maybe maybe orange. Maybe orange is a better match for this orange droid. Plus resistance. I'm, I'm more of a resistance person myself than first order. So I've got the orange one in there. Let's see how this goes. He's super chirpy. <laughs> I actually do like that a lot. I think that works, especially for his head style. Because he's got the weird, like, black piece and... putting the gray one back in s4d before by just because that is the one i prefer for him um if i can get that back in there but overall i'm i, I want to know which what uh what chip are you gonna go with i i think i'm still gonna go back with purple i like purple he, he's loud yeah i like the trumpety sound though <laughs> I, I just think that's kind of cooler for a BB unit. Uh, and I, I don't know if I mentioned... 
Well, okay, well, exactly. That's what I was trying to say, is that if you don't have any chip in there, he makes the sounds that BB-8 would make. No chip. I'm just, like, hitting the button. We'll hit the alternate button. I am curious of one thing. I'm going to put the purple chip back in real quick. I'm hitting the alternate button instead. Same. Same effect. It just does the same talk sequence as the other one would. So that just so we know, that's what that does. All right, so I'm going to put... I'm going to have both be smugglers. I know it's they're going to be on their like minute sequence, and we'll, we'll test that as I finish out the video and talk to you about some other stuff. But I'm going to set them right next to each other. I'm going to have you... You're on. Helmet's on, right? Helmet looks good. You're in frame. You're in frame. I'm going to hit the button. Same time. Oh, did you turn off? Dang guy. Okay, one more time. One, two, three. Set those down. So, there we go. We've gone over the accessories. Again, there's not really any other than the backpack. I definitely recommend the backpack. This is a cool insert, but it is removable. And that makes the backpack worth even more. Now, we know that I've named the blue guy S4DB4BY as a reference to the Sad Baby Squad. So if you watch any of my old toy reviews, you'll know what Sad Baby Squad's all about. But in case you didn't know, real quick, the Sad Baby Squad is those of you who are subscribed and you hit the notification bell, you use the force on that notification bell. That way you get notified when I put out new videos. That's my sad baby squad. My number ones, the ones who show up first to these videos. You guys are generally a pretty positive part of the crowd. I love having you here. You might be wondering what I'm doing. You're probably wondering. Dana, why, what are you? These are chance cubes. I happen to have a chance cube. And my sad baby squad members, those of you, I post in the community. And if you follow me over on Twitter, you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, any of those places. I've been posting these posts, even here on YouTube in the community tab, pictures of these creatures. You guys helped me name Sebasquabid. You helped me name S4DB4BY. You helped me name Sandy in the back over there. And today I asked the question, what, what do you think we should name this little duder? Oh. Yeah. So the options were, as he just said, the options were BB3RT or BB3R7, something like that, for Bert. I know call him Bert. Or someone on Facebook suggested BB... was it? BBR4D. BB Rad. BB Brad, basically. So his name's either going to be Bert or it's going to be Brad. I really like this idea of going with Brad because if it's the BBR4D, then he could be, just for character reasons... He could be Brad, and he might start the Rad BB Squad. Well, I might have the Sad Baby Squad, and we have S4D before BY. We could have Brad try to start the rival Rad Baby Squad. So I want to know your thoughts. Rad Baby Squad or Sad Baby Squad? But I think I want to decide right now, using this chance cube, red or blue, which name I go with. I'm thinking... i got to get this on video for proof. But, well, you guys can probably see it over here, right? If I, eh, no. Let's do it on camera. Uh, but I'm thinking that this is this is going to be the deciding moment, if that's okay with you guys. I'm thinking red for Bert, blue for Brad. Should we do this? Okay, the, the Chance Cube's going to decide. Chance Cube's going to decide. You ready? Oh, goodness. Brett is going to be... I'm sorry. Bert is red. Brad is blue. <gasps> blue. There we go. We there you have it. Guy, this, you witnessed it. This is I'm doing this this is this is Brad. This is Brad, the new leader of the Rad BB squad. And just get ready cuz he's going to be a co-host booping and beeping just kind of within the videos going forward. So just expect that, all right? It's you should be excited. This is going to be fun. All right, friends. Oh. Yeah. He's happy with his name. He's ha He likes it. I want to know what you think. Do you like it? Do you like these BB units? If you go to the Droid Depot, which one are you going to build? An R unit? A BB unit? Less accessories going on here, but still just as fun. 
Uh, and notice he is, still, like I said, he's still booping and beeping after a minute or so. This guy hasn't done anything, but I'm not going to touch S4DB4EY. Hey. I will kind of give you a brief little, whoa, a little demo here again. He rotates when I hit these buttons, just to show you on screen. His head rotates when I do those. Or if I do the bottom one, same thing. Exact same thing. We have our talk buttons. There you go. And he, he does move really well. He actually works a little bit better on carpet than the um, the R unit does because the R unit has small wheels underneath and you can get hair and gunk trapped under there. Whereas he is one just entire ball. Uh, one thing I have noticed is just through regular use, these little white dots will kind of scuff the paint a little bit. But I mean, it's a BB unit, so he should kind of look a little worn anyways. And speaking of which, I plan on painting my my droids, I'm gonna weather them, give them a little dirty kind of look at some browns and some a black wash in there, really bring out the details of the droid. Uh, a little probably silver here and there too, just to really make it look like a in-universe Star Wars droid. And I'm gonna do that to both at some point and I'll probably make a video on how I do it. You'd rather stay clean? Okay, well maybe, maybe I'll leave you, what do you think? Do you think I should, I should weather his 4D before BY, or do you think I should leave him clean? I, I get what you're saying, and clean's probably a good option for you, but I think at least Brad here should uh, should be weathered and have kind of a kind of have a different vibe than the other ones. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video has been informative. If it has been informative, please take a second and share this with a friend, throw it on Reddit, tell, I don't know, if you know somebody who's going to Galaxy's Edge or something like that, then just tell them, be like, hey, look, this guy Dan is doing all these crazy videos, and, oh, really, yeah, okay, well, if he says so. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for now. You know I love you, and until next time, and, Goodbye forever. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want more Galaxy's Edge news, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have notifications turned on. And check out one of these playlists. I've been putting all these Galaxy's Edge videos up here for you. I'm going to be vlogging. I'm going to be covering it. I'm going to be getting prices all for you. May the force be with you. Have good. Bye. Forever.